Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you in the name that is above every name, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for giving illumination to my mind and direction to my spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit whom thou hast sent to indwell us. Thank you, Father. I look to him to put me over in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you would, go with me to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, I want us to begin to look at verse 25. How many of you know the same laws that govern God's power yesterday govern His power today? Amen? Amen. The Bible says in Malachi 3.6, I am the Lord God, I change not. Hebrews 13.8, Jesus Christ the same. Today. Yesterday, today, and forever. Who changes then? Amen. Thank you. Who said that? Rhonda did. We change. But God does not change. If we come to God according to His Word, the answer is always yes and not no. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Look here at verse 25, the fifth chapter of Mark's Gospel. And the certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Now, if you just stop there, this speaks to our times today. There's nothing different. Humanity is the same today as it was then. There are people that have suffered many things of many positions. There are people that are suffering like this woman with the issue of blood. It said for 12 years there are some people that, that suffer longer and there are some people that suffer less. Humanity is, hasn't changed. So, reading this verse of Scripture that we're in speaks to our times of day, and we're going to see how this woman was healed. And if we have come to God according to the same methods, well, the answer will be yes to us. Amen? Amen. Now, let's go on reading. Look at verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Now, I wonder what this woman heard. Well, Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Yes. Now, Jesus is the healer. Satan is the oppressor. She must have heard that Jesus was raising the dead, casting out devils, healing the sick, feeding the multitudes. If you want to know the will of God for your life, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. Jesus said, the works that I do are not mine, but the Father's. Jesus said, whatever I hear the Father say, I say. Jesus and His Father are one. Amen? Amen. If you want to know the will of God, read the Bible. The Bible is the will of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Russell. The woman, the Bible says in verse 27, when she had heard of Jesus, she heard that he's the healer. Man did not have this woman's healing. Man did not have her remedy. Amen? Man did not have the cure for this woman. Matter of fact, the whole fifth chapter of Mark, the whole fifth chapter is the chapter of the incurables. Amen? You know, Jairus' daughter, Jesus raised from the dead. And then the madman of Gadara was possessed by the legion. And this woman. And then in verse 28, the Bible says, For she said, this woman with the issue of blood, For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? Now I'm going to stop for a minute. That was really 
Here's a multitude. Here's a press that's strong in Jesus. And Jesus said, who touched my clothes? To the disciples, that's kind of a silly question. Wouldn't it be? Leah. They're thronging him. Jesus is being touched from every side. Why was Jesus being touched? These people needed something or they wouldn't be touching him, Michael. Right. They weren't getting anything just because they were touching Jesus. Why? Because it wasn't the touch of faith. Only the touch of faith releases his power. There's power present in this room. We've seen miracles in the room. Instant healings in this room. Instant. Some have been gradual, but most miracles we've seen in here have been instant miracles. Why? Because we plug into it. Amen? Amen. The disciples, when they heard Jesus said, Who touched me? They didn't know what Jesus knows. Many people today, just humanity has not changed. Humanity is still the same. There's no difference now than it was 2,000 years ago. So many people come to God in uncertainty. Yeah. They were touching Him in uncertainty. He feels like any other man. Or let me just see if he's anointed. I can't feel any different. Or if it's the now this is a good one. You're going to know this one. If it's the will of God, I'll be healed. Hey, come on. Right, Russell? Amen. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. You want to know the will of God? Read the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. See, man's opinion and man's theory has corrupted our minds. Till whatever the minister says. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not being little in ministers. I'm one myself. But so many times ministers have put their interpretation on this instead of preaching the word of God. Paul told Timothy, he said, preach the word. He didn't say go out there and give your opinion or your theory. He said, give people the word of God. Amen. And so this woman, what she heard is that Jesus is the healer. And she needed to get to Jesus to receive her miracle. Amen, Bridget? Now let's just look. Jesus is being touched from every side. These people would not be touching him if they didn't need a miracle from him. Verse 31. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? Now, up to them, they couldn't understand why Jesus would say that. Verse 32, and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Look at verse 34. And he said unto her, daughter, now Jesus is speaking. He said unto her, Daughter, thy faith, or we would say today, your faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now, stop. Whose faith made this woman whole? Was it Jesus' faith? It was her faith. Her faith did it. It wasn't, if it was Jesus' faith, those people that were strong in him would have received a miracle. Amen? No, my dear brother and sister, it was the woman with the issue of blood. What did she hear? Remember? She heard of Jesus. What does the Bible say in Romans 10, 17? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The opinions and theories of men know the word of God. So, the Bible says she heard of Jesus. She heard that he was healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. She heard that he was anointed and physicians could not help her. She needed to get to where he's at. Amen. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so finally, now I'm going to be honest with you. There was an obstacle that was keeping her from Jesus. And what was it? The multitude. The multitude and the press 
Because she was supposed to holler out, if you read the book of Leviticus, I believe it is, she is supposed to say unclean. Remember, the leper was also was supposed to say when they got in public, unclean. But the woman with the issue of blood, she knew that my miracle, listen, Jesus has a miracle for you. Amen. It ain't maybe so or hope so. He has a miracle. What does Hebrews 11, 6 say? Well, you should know it. Without faith, listen, without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he, here it is, listen, Hebrews 11, 6, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, a lot of people always think one thing about God. He's a taker. He is a rewarder. According to Hebrews 11, 6, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God has a reward for you, but he has found himself by his word. God is not going to move contrary to the word of God. If he does, he would make himself out to be a liar. That's why without faith it is impossible to please him. That's why the people that were thronging Jesus didn't receive their healing did not receive the power of God into their bodies because they didn't mix faith with it, like the woman with the issue of blood. Amen. Oh, it's easy to say. It's easy. I've been messing with Chris. It's easy to say, if it be the will of God, ain't it, Russell? Yes. That's easy to say that. And that's why we don't see miracles because we're, we're living in uncertainty. When I pray for the sick, and I'm not a healer, but I use the name of Jesus and he shows up. Yeah, amen. Amen. I'm bold about it. No matter if they're limbs or if they're... I remember one time I was praying for one guy that didn't have a leg and the devil was right here speaking in my ear saying, don't do it. What about ill? Well, I'm not the healer. Amen. And you just command the limbs to grow out. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the healer. You can too. Jesus said in the 16th chapter, verse 18 of Mark, He said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes. Who is He talking to, believers? Yes. You. Amen. Amen. I think we need to get out there and do the Word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Then we're going to see the power of God in demonstration. When you and I do the Word of God, not talk about it, but do the Word of God then God's going to show up and then demonstrations are going to come. Amen? You lay hands on the sick. Because if you don't do it, there's going to be, there would be people, there has been people that medical science could do nothing of and was and hands was laid on them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were healed. Yes. Amen. Amen? Go out and use what belongs to you as a child of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the Bible tells me that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What does James 1.17 say? Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of life with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Good gifts, perfect gifts come from God. Amen. We need our minds so renewed with the word of God. What is, let me stop for a moment. What is the will of Satan? The will of Satan, according to John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Anything that steals, kills, or destroys from you did not come from God. God is not a thief. Now, did Jesus say if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand? Did Jesus Christ say that? So if God is making people sick and Jesus is healing them, it's divided. We need, we know what, we need to read the word of God for ourselves. That's what people need to do. You need to read this for yourself. Amen. Now, good gifts, perfect gifts come from God. Jesus, whenever he come, whenever it was necessary for him to bless humanity, to set aside all these natural laws, these catastrophes, or what did, what, what did Jesus do? He rebuked the winds, the sea, rebuked demons, rebuked sicknesses, cursed the fig tree. He spoke to things. 
Well, he, he rebuked the fever. Amen. Peter's mother-in-law. He rebuked the fever. What are we doing? We just sit around and we say, Oh, Lord, if it be a thou will. People that pray like that don't know the will of God. Amen. I'm not trying to be ugly. If people pray over sick people every time and say, Lord, if it be thy will, they don't know the Bible. That's right. I remember, you know, all those gross I had on my foot. And over the years, people that I've laid hands on, I didn't pray if it be thy will, I rebuked the sickness and the devil committed them to go. Amen. Amen. There's nothing special. You can do the same thing. I remember one time reading about a lady that was over in Africa and a witch, they, were, they have witch doctors over there. And uh, the witch doctor, well, you know the devil don't like you. Did you know the devil don't like you? Well, the devil's not going to. And so the, the witch doctor, well, you know how he's operating through the power of, of, of the devil. And there was this little lady, Holy Ghost filled lady there, and um, that witch doctor came up to her and says, whoever does the biggest miracle such and such day has to leave town. And she left out of there saying, my Lord, what am I going to do? You know, the devil, he can do some things, but he can't outmatch God. You know, we were reading Wednesday night about, you know, uh, Pharaoh's mag magicians. How they did some miracles, but God's power swallowed them up. Amen? Amen? Well, this little lady, she didn't know what to do, and the day came, and that witch doctor lay flat, and all of a sudden, he went up in the midair. Holy Ghost came upon that little lady. She ran up to him, laid hands on him, and said, In Jesus' name, come out of him. Flop. He hit the floor. <laughs> she did the biggest miracle, cast the devil out of him, and he left town. Amen. Holy Ghost came upon her. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, my dear brother and sister, bless God, miracles are going to follow. Yeah, oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Listen, the miracle worker is already in you. Yeah. If you are born again, listen, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 5, 17, if any man, that means woman too, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. The Holy Ghost, when you are born again and the Spirit of God comes to live in you, you are a new creation. Yes. Now, here's the way the Lord gave it to me one, one time. When you lay your hands on someone, God is flowing out of the God that lives in you. Remember, Corinthians, know you not that your bodies are the temple of the living God? You remember God said, I will walk in them? Remember that? Yes. Well, where's he at? In you. Amen. Not only is he in you, he's with you. Yes. And not only is he with you, he's for you. Yes. You got God in you, with you, and for you. Well, why are we defeated? Because we need to get our believing right. Amen. It was the will of God that all those people that thrown Jesus to be healed. But only one received the healing, and it was the woman with the issue of blood. It was God's will that they all received. And still is. Now, I'm going to say something, and I said it before, and it's going to sound, your mind's going to, might sound strange to your mind, but I want you to listen to me. It is the will of God for everyone to be healed. But not everyone will be. Okay? It is the will of God for everyone to be saved and go to heaven. But not everyone will be. There's conditions has to be met. Amen? Conditions has to be met for the lost man to be saved and go to heaven. Conditions has to be met for people to be healed. And here's where we... Here's where we Oh, Lord, well, they didn't get healed. It must not have been the will of God. Well, what about if the sinners, if somebody didn't get saved and somebody says, well, it must not have been the will of God for them to be saved. See, we know that salvation is for the world, but so is healing. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why it is so imperative. 
to get this in you. You need the Word of God. You know what's going to make a difference in your life? My life is this. Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What natural food is to your body, the Word of God is to your spirit. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you a simple question. If you ate three meals in one week in seven, seven days' time, how would you be feeling right now physically? Will we all be weak? So many people feed their bodies three hot meals a day and their spirit three cold snacks a week. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, and then they expect to be successful Christians. Can't do it, can you? Donald, you can't do it, can you? Now, Donald, if you never practice playing ping pong, I mean, excuse me, well, well, that too. He's a ping pong player too at 72. I'm getting the title back. Or tennis. If he never practiced or played, he wouldn't be any good at it. Friends, we need this. If we're going to be technicians of the Word of God, we need the feed upon it. It's just like John Lake was praying for a man one time. He, he, called, he, sent out, he called them healing technicians. He says, don't come back till they're healed. Find out why. Amen. I used to be a technician in a cable company, and I would track signal down. If I went behind the TV and there was no signal there, I would track it back till I found my signal. Amen. Right. Well, John Lake was praying for a man. He needed healing, Michael. And all of a sudden, as he was praying for this man, $5,000 just kept coming up before him. He stopped and looked at the man and says, what is this $5,000 that keeps coming up before me? He says, well, his brother died, and, uh, and I was liquidating the business, and I thought, since I did all the work, I'm going to hold $5,000 back, but that wasn't agreed upon with his uh, sister-in-law. See, she was married to his brother. His brother died, and he thought, since he did all the work, I'm going to keep $5,000 back. John Wade stopped and says, I can't pray for you. What are you going to do about that? That's wrong. That's stealing. Now, healing won't work in his case. See, healing is the will of God for everyone, but he wasn't going to get healed. You know what he did? He wrote out a check for $5,000 through the mail, sent it to his sister-in-law. John Lake never had to pray for him. The sickness disappeared. Left his body. Amen. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Stops the flow of God's healing power. See, that's not preached in churches. And I've seen more unforgiveness among Christian folks than I even have people in the world. It needs to be preached more. Everybody, you're going to have somebody to do you wrong. <laughs> Say something about you. Do something to you. You need to forgive them. Amen? If you want to walk in hell. I now, mean, there's also a devil out there, too, that will try to attack us, too. you got to remember that. But stand your ground and get the Word of God in you. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus told her in verse 34, He said, Daughter, your faith has made thee whole. Now, listen to me. God's law is still the same today. Correct? If her faith made her whole, I wonder if yours will make you whole. Yes, yes. Have you ever heard a preacher say or someone say, healing's been done away with? Have you ever heard that? Yeah. You better imagine. Well, have you ever heard anyone say that faith has been done away with? No, and you never will. Well, Jesus told this woman with the issue of blood, he said, daughter, your faith. It wasn't G now it was Jesus' power. It was the power. It was Jesus' power that flowed into this woman's body and healed her of that issue of blood. It was Jesus' power. It was virtue. Power went out of him. But it was her faith. Amen? That activated it. See? There's power in this room now to raise the dead. To heal every sickness, all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. It is present in this room. But just because God's healing power and saving power and delivering power is present in this room doesn't mean it's 
it's available to everyone unless they mix faith with it. We just seem to throw up our heads and say, well, if it's the will of God. No wonder the miracle working power of God is not demonstrated in a lot of churches. You've got to step out in faith. Yes, if you never step out in faith, you'll never see miracles. That means preaching too. Because God confirms the word with signs following. Amen, Amen fam. <coughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, see, you've got to know that it's the will of God. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday in this day when Jesus was walking and the woman with the issue of blood touched his garment, Jesus Christ has not changed. He has a miracle for you. Amen. He has a miracle. How do you receive that miracle hope? Through faith. You receive it through faith. Amen? Yeah. Through faith. Jesus said, your faith. Back when I used to have all those growths on my foot, I was shared at Dairy Queen last night. I went to Dairy Queen, and I, I, I went, and uh, Dylan was here waiting on the power man. And I went to Dairy Queen because I wanted some ice cream, too, and a hot dog. <laughs> and uh, so I went over there, and I ate, and I just got through, and I went and I put my, my ice cream back into their freezer and told them about it because I felt an impression upon my spirit to speak to uh, two, uh, two couples, middle aged and two young men, and I shared the gospel with them, but I shared my testimony of healing. But you see, my dear brother and sister, you got to be sensitive to God. When God speaks to you, you got to obey. Amen. I mean, what about if you're in the grocery store and the Holy Ghost speaks to you and says, listen, there's someone on the other line, on the other aisle over there. I need you to go pray for them. Amen. Obey. Praise God. Well, when I had all those growths, I knew it was the will of God for me to be healed. I knew that it wasn't God's will for them growths to be on the bottom of my foot and my hands. I knew that. But just because I knew it, knew that it was God's will for me to be healed, doesn't mean I was uh, healed, but I was on the road to recovery. Amen? Because I'm halfway there. And then I learned about there's power in the name of Jesus with faith behind it. And I spoke to those groups, cursed them, commanded them to die, ceased to exist in the name of Jesus after four, four and a half years. Uh, they started on the bottom of my foot. Now they're on top of my toes individually. When I spoke to them in the name of Jesus, they were still there. I could still see them. I could feel them. But I said, thank God they're gone in Jesus' name. I said that by faith. Yes. Amen. A week later, a week and a half later, every one of them disappeared off of my foot. Like, my foot's like baby skin. I thought, i got a hold of something. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I still had one on this hand that I don't remember never having before all those that were on my foot. And I thought, why didn't that go away? And I learned the... the a lesson about faith. I never spoke to this one. And so I touched it. I'm not going to sit here and tell you. I tried every, I tried man's remedy and nothing happened. I tried all kind of um, things, excuse me, with this one. Nothing happened. And so I touched it and said, I curse you, die, cease to exist in Jesus' name. When I said that, I could still see it, feel it, but I said, thank God it's gone too. Why? Because I believed in the name of Jesus. Within the week it left. I had it for years. I don't remember never having it. What made the difference? My faith. Jesus said, daughter, your faith. My faith in the name of Jesus healed my body. Your faith will heal you. Your faith. Don't let the devil rob you of your faith. Amen. And speak blessings over you. Russell prayed for my the other day. Not long after he prayed for it, what did he do? He used the name of Jesus. Amen? When you use the name of Jesus with faith behind it, listen to me, now I'm going to say something, but it's not an injustice. When you use the name of Jesus with faith behind it, that's, not, that's no difference than Jesus being here. Well, he is here. He's in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? When you use the name of Jesus with faith behind it, it will produce miracles. 
The miracle worker lives in you. The miracle worker lives in you. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say? And he said unto her, Daughter, your faith has made thee whole. Yeah. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now, humanity hasn't changed. The Bible tells me this woman suffered many things of many physicians and was nothing better but, but rather grew worse. Does that speak to our times today? Amen. Nothing's changed. Medical science, thank God for medical science. Doctors are here to be a blessing to humanity. Amen. Doctors are against the same thing that God's against. Sickness and disease. Now the Bible tells me that we are his ambassadors. We are his rep representatives here in heaven. Amen. Here, here on earth to represent Jesus. Now, do you think Jesus wants us people? To represent him? Absolutely not. No, he doesn't. We are ambassadors for his kingdom. No, he wants you strong. He wants your mind at peace and alert. And he wants you to have a strong and healthy body. And if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ, the enemy would have already took us out. Amen. But there's one thing that the enemy hates. It's a Christian that does the word of God and has knowledge of it. Amen. You know, you got to be careful. I know I, uh, one lady called me that didn't come to church here. Y'all know who she is, Bridget. Just think if she didn't come here, she'd be in the institution. What about if I would have just said, well, you need to go see a psychiatrist. I can't help her. Well, no, I knew I could help her because Jesus loves her. Yes. Amen? And cast the devil out of her. She told me the following week, she said, Brother Dennis, I almost had to be committed into the institute. She was hearing voices and seeing images in her house. Tracy told me. Then Canadian told me some things. And then she didn't know my name, Christian. She didn't know my name. And she was getting ready to come to this church one, one Sunday morning. And this was, before, this was before she knew me. And she said she heard a voice whisper in her ear that said, Stay away from Dennis Phillips. She said, who is Dennis Phillips? <laughs> she punched me up on the internet. She said, that's the preacher down at Cornerstone. Thank God she came. I was able to help her. Amen? Amen. You have the answer. You that's been born again that knows the champion from heaven. Yeah. Listen, this is not, this is a strong man's gospel. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, our champion that defeated the devil. The Lord of lords and King of kings, the Lord Jesus Christ, He is the, he is the strong man. Yes. Amen. Yes. And He's given us His name. Yes. Why aren't we using it? That's why. That's why people that don't use the name of Jesus, that's why we, they don't lay hands on the sick, that's why they don't cast out devils, that's why they don't raise the dead, that's why they don't see miracles, because they don't believe it. Amen. Amen. Do you believe in the miracle power of God? Yes. It'll work for you. The name of Jesus belongs no more to me than it does you. Amen? Amen. Donald's been using the name. James has been using the name. Diane's been using the name. Pale's been using the name. Dwight, Russell, Ronda. I call all your names out. You've been using the name of Jesus. Right. Stick with it. Let's make the devil mad and Jesus glad. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you are going to keep using it? Yes. yes Amen. Keep it up. It will work for you. Anytime that there's something, always have your faith in the circulation. Always be believing God for something. Be believing God for something. Always, listen, exercise is good for the human body. Exercise is very good. We need to exercise. Amen. Well, you need to exercise your spiritual muscles. Yes. Amen. Amen? Exercise your spiritual muscles, and then they will grow. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed, please.